Spoiler alert. women in California, they have never tested a good man. Let us send some circumcised bagis to they will show them. The Last of Us 2 is one of the most disappointing and controversial games ever made. It fails to deliver on the expectations and promises of the first game and instead offers a poorly written, illogical and depressing story that destroys the beloved characters and themes of the original. In this video, I will explain why The Last of Us 2 is a disgrace to gaming as well as storytelling, and how it wasted its potential to be a masterpiece. I will analyze the flaws and mistakes of the story, gameplay, and the elephant in the room, politics. I'll show how they ruined the experience for the players and fans. If you are a fan of The Last of Us 1, or if you are mildly curious about why The Last of Us 2 is so hated and criticized, well, stay tuned. What are you doing, kiddo? You really gonna go through with this? Now I know I'm a bit late to the party and I'm practically beating a dead horse. However... You came. Looks like just in the nick of time. A couple minutes ago wouldn't have been so bad either. What are you gonna do? Under normal circumstances, I wouldn't be talking about this game because I wasn't even planning on playing or even buying it. But I got it for free and figured, what's the harm, right? Please, don't do it, Spartan. I gotta tell you guys, Last of Us 2 is the worst game I have ever played. Whoa, calm down, Jamal. Don't pull out the nine. <laughs> this game takes roughly 25 hours or so to beat. The campaign is split into six days. Three days playing as Ellie, then three days playing as Abigail. And mind you, each day is about three hours worth of gameplay. <laughs> so can somebody please tell me why this game ends up the wrong guy getting dismembered? And why on God's magnificent glorious green earth am I playing as the person I'm trying to shift delete? This is my biggest gripe with the game because I'm playing as Ellie, right? which is the way it's supposed to be. I'm actually enjoying the game apart from all the time-consuming stealth kills and disgusting gay scenes. I was actually enjoying the game. Happy birthday, kiddo. What is this? This is a thing that took a mighty effort to find. <laughs> Take it. Close your eyes. It, it'll be worth it. Okay. Thirty seconds and counting. Astronauts report at fuel first. T minus twenty-five seconds. Twenty seconds and counting.
When the game pivoted to Abigail's POV, I lost all motivation to play. Show me your motivation. No, Virgil, no. They took my motivation. There was nothing left. They stole it from me, Karma, and they took it! So in other words, you basically have to play the game twice, in a single playthrough. See, now that's some bullshit. And look, it's not that I hate Abigail. To be honest, I don't know how to feel about her. What I'm attacking here is the idea, the principle of having the audacity to force your audience to sympathize and empathize with a character who is the object, the author of our pain, disdain, and misery in a game that is solely driven by revenge. It completely misses the point. No, oh, man. I'm so sick of this bullshit. Like I said before, I don't know how to feel about Abby. It's hard for me to see her as this angel that she portrays herself to be. This paragon of virtue that the game is trying to manipulate us into believing that she's this person that loves animals, is kind to other people, cracks jokes here and there. She's not the monster that we think she is. Yet she doesn't show the least bit of hesitation in a conflict or turmoil when the man who kills your father ends up saving your life. But you bash his head in. And the weird thing is, the game is all about showing empathy, trying to get us to relate and understand with the other side of the coin. But when it comes to Joel, all that stuff is thrown aside without a second thought. From Ellie's perspective, Joel is an unforgivable, bottom of the barrel, sorry excuse for a dad. Even though he did what he did to save your life. But you just. I was supposed to die in that hospital. Okay, fine, fine. What about Abigail? From her perspective, Joe's an irredeemable, worthless piece of shock that deserves everything he's got coming to him. But he saved your life. So? It can't be all that bad, right? Maybe the picture you had in your head this whole time was not what you thought it was. Maybe instead of killing Joel, we can ask him why he did what he did. And then what? Abby, Abby, listen to me. Just listen. Look. Maybe revenge isn't the- He cold. That's that bullshit. That's that bullshit right there. Abby also shows no remorse when killing her own. And she also says this before she almost kills Dina. She's pregnant. Good. Abby. And it seemed really off to me when I heard her say that. But now, I realize what she meant by that. You see, when she said good, she meant good as in a baby's life for a baby's life. Jesus. What a mind job. What do you say to something like that? And I don't really know how the game expects me to root for this person after they say such things. And then we have some completely useless, unnecessary characters in this game like Meld, Dina, Isaac, Yara, Lily. I was going to mention the alleged leader of the Scars, but after some research, it turns out that the woman that Abby choked out was not the leader. The actual leader died before the game started, allegedly. Why don't you back it up with a source? My source is that I made it the fuck up! So let's look at Isaac. He's the leader of the wolves. Top G. So what Isaac basically does in the game is to tell Abby that Owen, her on and off boyfriend, shot a fellow wolf. And it's not an animal. It's the faction. That's what they call themselves. Were you listening to me, Neo? Or were you looking at the woman in the red dress? I was... Look again. Which prompts Abby to go looking for her on and off boyfriend. Secondly, 
He is responsible for organizing the raid on the Seraphites later in the story and proceeds to immediately die in a cutscene. No! What the fuck? Did he also have to be on the island during the raid? <laughs> Honestly, what was the team that Naughty Dog smoking? Next, we have Yara and Lily. Yara. Demons are coming. Cut her down. Okay, these two characters vex me almost as much as Ellie and Dina, and there's a reason why I'm using the name Lily. Oh, we'll get into that later. The only reason why these two characters are in the game is simply for padding out the runtime. If we eliminated these characters from the story, the game would have made Abby's section significantly much shorter, which would have been such a win. I mean, honestly, whether they are in the story or not, it's of no consequence. At the end of the day, Isaac attacks the island, Abby makes it to Owen, Abby gets captured by the Rattlers and is tortured, but she lives to tell the tale because Ellie frees her and chooses not to kill her. The only thing of importance that they actually contributed to the overall plot or story is saving Abby, and that is where their mission starts and ends. Then we have Dina. <laughs> Dina, 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 Dina. Scale of 1 to 10. How would you rate our kiss from last night? Now, Dina is just an extra gun. She is here for pandering to the disgusting homosexual lifestyle and pushing this agenda to the masses. I want to see you two scissor. <gasps> for what reason and purpose, you ask? It's simple to corrupt good morals. You see, it is within the nature of evil to corrupt that which is good. The only way for gay people to exist is for normal people like us to exist. The same way for us to exist in a car engine, there must first be a car engine. Because it didn't really make much sense to me as to why Tommy chooses to go alone to avenge Joel when he could have gone with Ellie and the story would have been so much better for it. I mean, for goodness sake, Dina is pregnant. I think I'm pregnant. Quiet, Elaine. We don't care. Don, please. Get back in the kitchen. Here's a rough take on how much better the story would have been if it was an Ellie and Tommy story. Revenge based right. So both characters are grieved by Joel's untimely demise, so they set off to get their revenge. We get to learn more about Tommy's personality, his goals, and the like. And of course, Tommy hesitant on this whole revenge thing because he's trying to look out for Ellie. So if push comes to shove, Tommy is willing to give up and abandon this revenge story if it means protecting Ellie. As we progress through the story, cutting and torturing people for information, Ellie starts to act strange, where she would normally kill and scoff when gunning somebody down. She starts to let off a slight chuckle here and there. Ellie, it seems, is rather enjoying the killing. As she continues with her killing spree, there's a certain glee in her eye every time she pulls the trigger. Where she would be wearing the emotions of grief and sorrow, they slowly become undone and replaced with emotional garments of a sick, twisted excitement. You guys get the idea. As the story continues, Tommy will be desperately and helplessly watching Ellie slow descend into madness, losing whatever is left of her humanity. And when Tommy finally gets through to her and gets Ellie to acknowledge what she's become and finally bring this revenge mission to a close, to abandon it and return to Jackson, Tommy gets shot in the head by Abby. And in that moment, the game gives us a choice to abandon our revenge and take Tommy's body back to Jackson or to pursue Abby and put a stop to her once and for all. But in doing so, Ellie will lose whatever is left of her humanity and sanity. But we eliminate whatever threat Abby and her organization pose to Jackson. So you, as the player, choose. Now, that script isn't the best. I think it's way better than what we got. The best script 
would involve not killing off Joel in the first place and having Joel and Ellie take center stage once again. That would be a game most people would love to play. Now let's get into the politics of this messed flop. We bring in the studio this morning one of the gay rights activists, Mr. Should I call you Mr? Sure. Pepe Julian Onzima. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for Good having morning. Me. Morning to you. Why are you gay? Who says I'm gay? You are gay. Now guys, personally, I'm not down with this gay lifestyle slash propaganda that corporations are desperately trying to shove down our throats and make it appear as a virtue to be gay when it is in fact a sin and it is against the will of God. I am not gay. I have relationships with women and sex with men. And I got news for you. That means you're gay. Saying things like it's because I was born that way is no excuse to practice homosexuality. Because in that same token or same vein, what if I told you that the reason I lie every time is because I was born that way? Does that suddenly make me being a liar morally sound? Now hold on, Chief. There's no need. Let me do my job. You brought me in, now we're gonna play this thing out to the end. Should I now hold liar parades every June to celebrate that I'm a liar and proud? That's just utter nonsense and pure garbage. And I'm no different, okay? I'm a sinner, just like everybody else. I used to watch porn a lot and I still do on some days, even though I'm Christian. But here's the difference. I acknowledge that that is something that I shouldn't be doing. And I've taken gradual steps to cut that behavior out of my life because it goes against Jesus' commandments. This isn't my morality. It's God's morality. And if we live in his house, we don't get to make the rules and define what's right and wrong because we want to follow our sick and perverse desires. There's a girl in this game named Lily, whom they call Lev. And everyone is participating in this delusion that she's actually a he. But we know better, don't we? When in fact she's a she and it's so cringy as hell confusion of the highest order and it won't stop unfortunately companies will continue to peddle this nonsense because people keep buying these products if we do not want to see this filth in our games and media we need to vote with our wallet personally i don't watch or play games that have a hint of gay nonsense or propaganda i stay far away from that and i advise that people start doing the same we need to bleed these companies dry and hopefully we may return to a somewhat normal reality like how it was back in the early 2000s in conclusion the last of us 2 is a game that should have never been made it tarnishes the legacy of the first game and does little to justify its existence if there are still some people who want to give this game a try i would strongly recommend a hard pass it is not worth your time not worth your effort and most importantly, it is not worth your money. Thank you for watching. I am Optimus Prime, and I send this message to any surviving Autobots taking refuge among the stars. We are here. We are waiting. <laughs>